Hi guys, <clears throat> I'm just gonna make a, a video and, and, and I wanted to explain uh, you know the, the generator the the energy that comes out of the generator uh, the little generator is put together we're just waiting for a controller hopefully I just find out this uh, is arriving in Toronto um, so uh, I would say by Monday or Tuesday I should have the a prototype controller so I can test on that motor but the second get my RPM out of it but uh, I want to show people exactly when I call that a virgin energy and everybody all oh, is because it's got the wave on the oscilloscope the same wave of the RC I mean the uh, same wave of, of AC and uh, the thing is not easy at all because rectifier don't even see it you can't rectify that with a rectifier. I'm only putting, I can only turn the motor at 1000 RPM right now with my RC, RC controller. And uh, you know, it's, that's as far as it goes. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you a first thing I'm gonna show you. This is rectifiers and verse. Okay, come on. Uh, focus, you bastard. Uh, she doesn't want to focus, but here you go. So anyway, it's a regular rectifier made in China. And here's is another rectifier. That's a high frequency uh, rectifier for um, uh, induction stove. And of course, that's a 38 uh, volt uh, DC um, button. That's a, I think it's 12 or 1400 watts. Uh, it, it, that thing will create over 2,500 watts of heat and people doesn't believe me <clears throat> it's because they don't know shit about nothing. Here's a light button, right? And that one is only a 21 volt button, right? And look of the cooling system. The whole back of that casing is a heat exchanger. So you're telling me, you know, that's a lot of heat that thing produced that. Those are the big light for security in the airport or large building, whatever. They're super, super bright, uh, and, you know, and they have a driver. The driver, <clears throat> let's see if we can get that here. There we go, I think. We got that. Right, the input is a minimum AC 120 volt at 240, at 50 hertz to 60 hertz at two, 200 VA, that's 2 amp. Output DC 21 at 1.5 amp. So, to drive this driver, I have to, especially if I don't have the 100 volt, at 100 volt you need 2 amp to drive, pretty much drive to make this driver work. And this driver has got rectifier because it's creating DC. And I was running with this light. I can run this light full full force, and with 38 volts of this generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re reset the uh, the camera so you get a better view on what I'm doing, so you don't have to look in my ugly face and look in what is in the front of me. And then we'll uh, do a little test, and then we'll reset the camera, and we'll, uh, I want to explain to you a little bit more about the energy is coming up on that uh, generator so I'll just turn this off and just reset for a minute alright we're back so um, I'm gonna start just by showing you I'm gonna connect the uh, the generator directly to my little up here uh, directly to that light nothing no rectifier or no nothing because it's supposed to be is a rectifier there AC current comes one way and DC goes the other way, right? So let's see here. Um, let's get this thing turning. All right. There we go. Now people don't believe me about my volts. All right.
it's quite blinding, isn't it? I'm going to turn it up the other way, so I can see. Now, here you go. 38 volts. Now, how can I run this driver? We need a minimum of 100 volt EC at 2 amp to run this, to drive this thing, here, right? And you can see, I'm going to slow it down because my hertz here, my hertz is only 38 hertz. Let's let's see that for a minute. 31 hertz. There you go, right? So we have AC 38 volts, and we have 31 hertz. How the fuck I'm driving that? Now how can I drive this light here? It just doesn't make any sense, right? And now I'm going to show you the Hertz still bypass all this driver and still work alternative at the other end. Here you go. Can you see the throbbing in the light? Right? So we're still getting some Hertz, which is way faster but now I'm going to show you something. Now we're going to move from this light. And I'll use the high frequency because the other one don't, don't, don't do nothing. Well, they, they all don't do nothing. But this one has something it's putting a massive feedback and it's creating a magnetic compression and I want to show you what, what I mean by magnetic compression can you see this thing shaking my whole toolbox is it's like I got a gas motor running on that right and as you can see the Richter fire doesn't do anything about it. You know, it doesn't see Richter fire. Let's try the other Richter fire. Just for all the people, so, oh, I should have tried the other Richter fire, right? Like I didn't do that before. But that's okay, right? That's what researching does. You know, prove to the the idiot out there, then it's, diff it's different type of power than they, they know about. And most most of the thing they know is from the book. So it, it doesn't have a whole lot of merit when it comes down to different type of power. Because they're stuck in the box. So we'll restart that. Same. But I get less of a, of a knocking in my, in my generator. You have to understand is, is this generator has got it's got no brushes, is, is no friction except the two bearings. Okay? And and, and what you see here, I rewind ouch. <laughs> and I didn't get a shock. By the fact again, make sure I get good contact, right? There you go. Right? I don't feel nothing. Same thing when I pour a big line. I don't feel nothing. Because it's not bloody easy. You know? If you people would just sit back for three seconds and listen to what I say, when it's not easy, it's not easy. It's got a sine wave of easy, but it's not easy. This is what you make AC out of it. This is the power you actually create AC. That's what they're creating in the big power plant. Because you can multiply. You can multiply this power constantly if you know how to do it. Right? You know, I figure out how to do it. And I'm going to test it before I tell you, make sure I'm not talking out of my ass. But that's the exact same type of power Tesla was, was working with. And that's why you can multiply and amplify. And now if you have a 500 horse primary, which is a 500 horse motor, by the end of his line, by the time he, he processed it, he amplified and magnified it, he put the slash into it and push it back into a transformer again. On the output of the transformer, you end up with 1.5 million horse on a drive. That's mean cap capable of pushing or moving 1.5 million horse of energy. So you start with a certain amount of power and you mul multiply the power. Now it's a secret how you can release the energy from that voltage. 
and I, I, I kind of just literally thought about it. I mean, I was wondering, why, how can you release, how can we release this energy? And everybody else are talking about releasing energy. I figure a way to do it, and the same way Tesla has been doing it, you know, and the same way they're still doing it today in the power plant, and uh, it worked really well. So that's why those people cannot rectify this type of power because it's not easy. It's a radio communication volt. It's a sine wave volt, in other words. You know, and and it's nothing. You know, to uh, you know, everybody's always working with static electricity. Well, no, as that means, if it's static electricity, it can run just about anything, and it doesn't kill you. I'll take it, right? So, anyway. Um, this is what the reason I wanted to, to, to show you that. Um, just hang on here. Uh, there we go. Now you can see my ugly face. Um, I just want to let people know, like, you know, I have lots of people now that they really e email me and, and help me a lot. I got, uh, you know, a controller is already in Toronto uh, from, uh, from London, from a couple of guys. Um, they watched my video and they said, damn, they said, I have one of those I, I built, you know, for a project a few years ago. And so they sent me this controller, no f cost, they pay for delivery. I mean, I cannot ask for better than that. I mean, when people want to help you and stuff like this. And I have other people who really try to help you, to help me, but they don't, they miss, they misunderstand what I'm saying or they don't not understand what I'm saying. Everybody's saying to me, Thing with controller, three-phase controller, three-phase controller. You have to understand those motors are not exactly a motor. You can call it a motor if you want to, but I can call a tree a shrub, right? Or I can call a tree you know, a, 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 a log. But this motor is not a motor. This motor was designed, or this unit was designed, is a 360 degrees, one, two, three, right? Now the magnificence of, of 3, 6 and 9 all fit in this conf configuration of the motor. And uh, the reason it fit, I don't think Tesla designed this motor. I think this motor is coming in from some place else. Um, because it's been used in different different way. They've been using an on hammerhead crane from Russia. Uh, the, 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 they don't have a drive motor for spinning the, the thing. They, they, don't, they don't have that. They have because those motors uh, we can use it as synchronized or synchronic motor. We can make it turn very very slow. We can make it turn and like uh, uh, 60 degrees. You know, tentative degrees of time, five degree of time. We can break all those, those steps slowly so it turns very slow and it can turn very very smooth and it's very powerful because the crane. I mean, they lift 500 ton at almost 200 feet away. From uh, from the from the from the base from the swing swing part, and they can lift, you know, uh, 500 tons. The machine, the the, the, the garden crane probably weigh that much, and it can swing that weight, move that weight around, and stop it right on the mark, with no gear, no gear, no drive, no electric motor, no just as big drum on on the top of the of the swing bearing. So, and then uh, other uh, uh, equipment are using it, the open pit mining. The open pit mining, mining they have a, that big shovel, it's so heavy, bearing cannot support it, they crush, they explode, it's too much weight. And uh, the amounts of weight they're moving when they pick up a one big scoop load up, you know, a 120 ton truck, uh, and, and the machine itself, uh, it's no gear who can make you know this thing move and we're not braking and especially when you stop moving the brakes is on the gears the gear drive it blow right again on the swing bearing they put this drum this this uh, synchronous more uh, a drum which stir a drum motor right we'll call them a drum motor and that thing can swing all day long and it's never, never miss a beat, right? And then, you know, and, and we got, uh, uh, for the last two years, um, they, people's been making uh, a two passenger light, light plane uh, fly with those motors. Uh, they make almost some, they made out of plywood for, for God's sakes. You know, just 
magnets glued into a, to a plywood and, and a coil with no iron glue into a piece of plywood and uh, they're flying, right? So, and, and, and then I, I, you know, I'm reading some of the, of, of the, of the email from, from engineer, an electrical engineer and, and physicist, or they pretend to be, or they pretend to be, you know, something. And uh, they all say the same thing. They don't think that's motor have capability of doing this type of work. Well, wake up and pull your head out of your ass. We've been using it for 50 years. We just never pay attention to it because they're hiding it very carefully. It's no, hey, you don't see that in the six o'clock news. Hey, we have a new motor for swing for the hammerhead. Like no more moving parts. It's perfect, right? You don't fucking hear that, right? Because they don't want, hey, we have a new motor for, a new, a new type of motor for a washing machine. Well, everything, think about washing machine, right? Well, they started with a goddamn little gas motor, two horse motor or one and a half horse motor on the outside, you know. And then he went up to an electric motor and then he went up to the electric motor inside and they start closing it all up. It was an electric motor, so no one really paid attention. You know, even when they put the say, direct drive, right? No one really paid attention because most of the people are not educated. They don't even know the meaning of direct drive, right? So never mind figure out what, what is driving the, the washing machine. As long as they press the button, it works. Who fucking care, right? Well, that's a society, that's, that's a world of stupid, and they were always going to be stupid if you don't ask questions. Because obviously, you didn't get educated in your life. So during your life, you have to educate yourself. I've been doing it all my life. You know, I have bruise, I have cut, I almost lost finger, I almost lost you know, my life a few times. That's the way you learn. The guy who learned on the safety of, of his little square little wall box, what did he really achieve? Right? All the world of science for the last 50 years, right? Besides making fucking video game and computers, you know, d doesn't have any fucking need for and crap. Like people think they're going to live and all, everything will be, will be run by computer. Well, I have a surprise for you. The computer, you know, won't do what you want. Especially when you fucking shitter this plug, your toilet is plug and it's full of shit and you get on your smartphone and say, oh, the computer's gonna help me. Yeah, he's gonna help you. He's gonna tell you, roll your sleeve, right? And go and fetch the plug or plug that thing with your hand. That's how he's gonna help you because his no hand will come out of your smartphone and clean up your toilet, right? Only fucking idiot thinks that's gonna happen in the next 25 years. So, you know, that's the way, that's the way we're living today in a world of illusion and lie. Because you can cover a shitload of lie if you create a beautiful illusion. Like, hmm, for example, Hollywood, right? You can lie and then take Hollywood and they make it all pretty, right? Like the world is just fucking peachy. But the world is not fucking peachy, believe me. You know, it's a fucking shithole to live in. Put it this way. All the lies and it doesn't stop. You know, it just keep on going. So, but... Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's okay. I mean, like, you know, that's the way, that's the way society is, if you can call that a society, right? But uh, anybody who can explain, you know, uh, all the four found there who try to be really smart and stuff like this, um, I would suggest them they just pull their head out of their ass, put one of those things together and spin it, right? Just spin it. Oh, and by the way, the drum motor, the RPM, with torque, with everything you want, is unlimitless to destruction. That means it will spin as fast to it will destruct itself. So the only thing who hold you on spinning it is how good you make the drum and the, and the bearings. That's the bottom line. Because if you have a controller who have no limit on the ratio, then you will have no limit on your RPM because it's all about the ratio. It's all calculation of the ratio. You know, uh, the 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 the, 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 the controller for, for 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 running on that it runs on one two three. You know, and 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 it cascade from that, right? And that's how they run because they have three legs. Who goes nowhere? It's no it's no ground line in those fucking three three legs of what they call three face motor. It's no ground line in there. 
So if there's no ground line on your motor, it's not really the same three-phase AC you have. Because even with a three-phase AC, you still have a ground line. Right? It doesn't matter. Your AC, you have to have a ground line. But when you play with that, suddenly it's no longer AC. Well, it, it, it's DC. They, you know, they, they call it DC square wave, right? But if you push, instead of pushing a square wave into it, if you push a pulse, or as a matter of fact, an impulse, because pulse is just a, sh a, a low volt, a low volt uh, uh, um, uh, square wave. So, uh, but a pulse, and you can increase the voltage of the pulse, you will see things turning, you know? And, and to me, this thing have more potential than probably any other apparatus I see, piston, steam, you name it. Now they have a new fuel, it's supposed to be crystal and stuff like that, so you will do uh, 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 120, uh, 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 I think it's 120 or 28,000 miles per gallon. Um, it's gonna light up everything up and stuff like this, right? But it's still on the ground, so that's gonna take another 100 years before we see it. So, uh, but they, they're raising money like crazy on that, right? So that's good, and let it do their thing. And then we have uh, uh, the, another uh, thing there, like, you know, with the, uh, uh, with the Tesla, uh, Tesla Energy. Well, you know, I hate to tell you that, but that Tesla company, the only thing is Tesla, right? Is the name because it's nothing else and end to it they're pushing hundreds of amp they're playing with low voltage um, you know the, the, the car have to be recharged which is stupid right um, I mean like it's like you know you got to stop and recharge your car so that I can go further well better than it don't get chased by the bad guy with a Tesla car because you might not make it home. So <laughs> that would be a slogan <clears throat> because you run out of juice. But uh, you know, it, everything we have to, we perceive in life, whatever is a rock, a bird, a plane, another person, right? It's just perception because if you look at it. Everything is resonance, right? When I mean resonance, I'm not talking about sine wave because resonance doesn't have a sine wave. I'm talking about pure resonance. And when you get pure resonance, that's when you unleash all the energy from the sine wave because you remove the sine wave, right? And you have all this release because it, you know, it, it holds everything. Soon you remove that up, it became pure resonance. When you have pure resonance, it's, it's, it's the whole room fills up, right? I mean, I can, I can, I, I just put a couple of wire in my oscilloscope and I start by the voodoo machine and it doesn't matter how far you are, like in the room, it fills the room up, right? Because it's resonance, it's instant, right? Same thing with that here. If you put, you know, uh, let's say when I get this thing crank it up so I can actually make, uh, make about 100, 110 volts, which is going to be making about 140 volts out of it when I'm turning it. And if I can turn faster, then the volt get it higher. I can take this little generator, right? And I can light probably, I don't know how many LED it takes to go around the world, but I can light that up with all that here. And it will all light up instantly. I can put, you know, a thousand foot of wire, right? Well, a thousand foot of wire, no fucking AC can carry that through it. We all know, extension, like a thousand foot of wire, you, your wire would have to be this big to get at least maybe a hundred volt out of it if you would be lucky, okay? I can use a speaker wire, like, you know, the, the, six, uh, the uh, 18 gauge speaker wire or 16 gauge speaker wire, right? And run a thousand feet and put a light bulb in the end and then hook it up and soon that thing start that light is instantly on. You do that with EC, you plug it on, on a, on, on a, on a 16 gauge wire at a thousand feet, nothing happened. I mean, nothing. You can grab the two one end of the wire, there's nothing in there. Because that sine wave do not carry. Every time it goes up into a wire, your sine wave getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So in the end of the line, you have nothing. No sine wave, no current, no motion, you have nothing, 
right? So, I mean, like, you know, it, it's, it's, this is why, you know, it's so important for people to understand it's not just a generator. It's a sine wave generator, right? It doesn't make, it does not make AC currents. But it will run all your AC equipment at 60 hertz. It will run a lot easier because I call, it's kind of a smart energy because it seems to want to help you fix things. It correct itself. Uh, just for a good reason, it correct itself. Uh, it goes through a whole, a whole driver and says, screw the driver, I'm just going to run the light bulb. I'm just going to run the light there. He says, screw all that stuff, all that like electronic shit, screw that. I can bypass all that. I can flow through the board and now I'm in diameter the board and, and go and do the job on the other side. So, I mean, this is a, this, this is a choice, right? So to me, something actually made a choice beside I'm not going to do it or I'm going to do it. To me, it requires intelligence because you can have a stupid person that same, give them that same problem, they will be speechless for days because they don't know, they don't have the intelligence to answer the question. But this thing make a decision. Well, before you make a decision, you have to go through the random of processing the information. This thing does it, and it never does it to actually on the bad side. It always does it on the good side. So, you know, I, you know, people can say whatever they want, but I mean, you know, this little generator, if I can make it spin high enough, I don't need uh, 20,000 RPM and stuff like that, but if I can produce a high, high enough volt, um, I'm going to be pumping that through um, a microwave transformer and through a slasher and uh, uh, first thing, I, you know, I, through a slasher and then I'm going to dump it into my uh, 10, 10 uh, uh, kW uh, tra full transformer and see what kind of, uh, of uh, power I'm going to get out of the other end because I know it's, that's going to power it because I power it with my small pump. So, I mean, I can power the transformer, but how much can you put out? It, it depends on how much juice I'm putting in there. But I think I can achieve with the, uh, with the uh, uh, transformer from the microwave, I can achieve 16,000 volt, no problem. So, if I can achieve 16,000 volt and then put it through the slasher um, to, to uh, uh, put a cycle, the 60 cycle into it, um, I might just do the job, you know. So, I mean, it would be nice if it, that's, that thing that small can power house through the proper, you know, the, the proper system. But I will try. I mean, like, you know, it's just something you got to try because that's what science is all about. It's trying and trying and trying. Now, remember, I mean, everybody, you know, when you do a test, a successful test, it doesn't matter what the result is. If you can multiply, I mean, if you can uh, duplicate this test over and over and over and always give you the same result or short, very close to the same result all the time. This is a successful test. But a test will only give you one sh shot and then another, sh another shot is different, another shot is different. This is a failure test. This is mean you don't understand what's going on in the beginning of it and, and, and the system is not working properly. But like, you know, if people would just sit down and just remove, you know, for, for and I say that a while ago, just remove the word AC for a minute because, you know, the guy who's telling me how to do this, he cannot explain to me how that power comes out of the plug, how is manufacture of the stream. He, he have no clue, right? Because all his knowledge, whoosh, stop at the plug, right? If he's an electrician, it's stop at the transformer. And after that, that's all fucking taboo stuff. We don't want to know. It's high voltage. Don't touch that. It's high, it's high, high amperage. Well, there's no fucking amp in that. It's called potential. It's not an amp yet because the pole transformer is the one who takes the potential of the high volt with the, with, the, with the cycle into it and convert it to watts or amps. So many watts. So many amps, right? So this is how it's made. AC is creating a new transformer. The transformer is the AC manufacturer. What the food you have to put into it to create that, it's not AC at all, right? It's not AC at all. I mean, like, you know, I don't care 
who you are and what you are and who you come from and what planet you come from, it's not AC. Because you cannot multiply AC. Because I would say maybe from the first day someone created AC, someone was already trying to multiply that. Because that's just the nature of human. Oh, this guy can do that. I can, I can make it better, right? And no one still can multiply. You can't get, you cannot use AC and make more than what you put in by doing a whole bunch of conversion and stuff like this, right? Especially uh, with iron. So you can remove the iron out, you can have a higher volt and you can manipulate that, you know, and, and, and you won't have the loss, but you will have a, an effect around you. So, you know, and uh, the, the iron literally control that leakage and it's not a radiation, it's not an EMF, it's not this, it's not, it, I mean, whatever they tell you what it is, you know, they're so off the ball because they, I mean, like, you know, it's like the electrons, right? Some scientists, the electron move. Some scientists are the electron, they're going roughly at the speed of light or short, slightly lower than speed of light. And some scientists says it's way faster than speed of light. We don't even know what if I, how fast it is because we can't see it. Okay, well, here we go, right? So I don't really care, right? They're moving. So let's put it at speed of light so, so they can both be right. So we use speed of light. That's pretty fucking fast, right? I mean, like, you know. That will go through your brain, would not even know you, it happened, and it will take you an hour or two to realize something happened. That's a fast, right? So I, then I, my second question was, uh, a, 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 an, a, an electron, right? An electron is a particle. You see, and they say, yes. Okay, that's mean. It's a very, very small sand, sand uh, piece of sand. I mean, we're talking, my, we're talking small, right? So, okay, so it's a particle. Did so Got gravity? Yes, they have gravity. Okay. Do it is affected. Uh, uh, it, it is affected by um, by heat. And he said, "Well, any any uh, what I what I got of it on the on the on the uh, 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 radiation level, yes, apparently is affected by heat. Well, okay. So now we have something who fly the speed of light. It's tiny, tiny, tiny." Right? And they move very fast, you know, but my question is, why the surface of this planet? Because I've been into sandstorm, so, you know, and, and I, 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 I challenge anybody to stand for two hours facing a sandstorm and still be there, this face to be there to talk to me, we have any lip to talk to me. So we're talking about and then Krim, and we're talking about sand, sand, sandstorm, the, the wind normally is no more than about 50 to 60 miles an hour, right? Now we're talking about hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. I don't know, no one knows what the speed of light is. So I'm just guessing here, like everybody, every, every scientist is doing is, is guessing. Now, now I'm talking out of my ass right now. So, okay, so we have stuff that's moving so fucking fast and there's so many of those my biggest question is why the surface of this planet is not as smooth as a, 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 a bowling ball or my head, right? Um, makes no sense for, for, the, for, for the electron to move that fast, right? But when I listen to them, they say heat. Well, how do you separate electrons? Well, I mean, shoot, that's got to be higher in electrons. It's a piece of metal, it's, it's a medium magnet, right? So obviously, this got a whole shitload of electrons, right? But how do you separate those electrons from the, 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 the attractive and the repulsive? The, the north or the south, right? Uh, it's just happen when you're shocking with a very high voltage. Oh, well, what happened when you shock a piece of tilt with, 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 with high voltage? Why it became a magnet? Well, it's very simple because you realign 
the fucking electrons. And how do you rely on the electron? Because there's a big fucking massive electron here. It creates shape and object, right? Because we mold it like this. We melt it down, right? And we create these pieces and then we hit it with a very high uh, voltage for a certain amount of period of time and we create a magnet. And the strength of the magnet is the material, you know, how they melt it, how they mix it and all that makes this magnet. Well, now this magnet is probably gazillions of electrons. Iron electrons, I mean, iron, because this thing only stick to iron, so it's got to be iron electrons, right? You know, I'm just saying. So, if you have iron electrons, then you have all kinds of different electrons, like behind me, aluminum electrons, copper electrons, right? Nothing stick to it. Right? Because of different electrons. They won't stick together. They're different. Right? You gotta realign the copper electron just like you did with the goddamn copper and aluminum. So you can create an attraction with another piece of aluminum. So that's because that's what you're doing when you're aligning the electron. Positive, negative, uh, and north, south, whatever you want to call it. You know? And, and that's how the electron, electron is, is millions of electrons. I mean, again, this is a big chunk of ion electron. But we mold it, we melt it down. Oh, and how you separate electron? Well, you know, each electron have a certain resonance of capacity. That's mean, when you're heating up ore to the right temperature, let's say your ore has got iron, whatever, different type of material, if you start removing the low temperature ore, so you because you don't you don't want to burn it, so you start heating up and you remove the low temperature ore, so that one all those electrons start melting, <whistles> go into a loop puddle onto one side, then you crank up the heat, then it goes to the next, you know, a, 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 a frequency which heat is resonance, lighter a bit lighter, right? If you go right beside the flame you should be able to hear the resonance of that flame. And the reason that flame light up a piece of paper is not because it, the, fly, the, the, the paper, uh, the flame run on the paper. No, no. It heats up the, the particle of the paper so goddamn bad, it light up itself. And then the paper consume itself. It's all about starting, priming and starting the element. So, I mean, uh, it's... <laughs> It's just a question of very short period of time, you know, which will be able to literally replace total energy around this planet. I mean, the fuel, I already, we already, I already got that. It's just a question for me to finish that so I can, I can get the instrument, you know, the proper instrument to do the test and build the prototype for igniting nitrogen under negative pressure. And I will show that, you know, it's it's the only thing that's been running our whole life. Our energy we call fuel is not fuel. It's not burning. If it was burning clean, if it was fuel, it would be burning clean, and it doesn't it create pollution. So for therefore, it's not burning. And uh, so, but if you prime the nitrogen with resonance, because now I'm talking about pure resonance not sine wave resonance, just pure resonance. And if I feed that into an intake, and when the motor's cranking up, it creates this negative pressure into the intake, and it's literally sucking air constantly, soon that air is under negative pressure, I should be able to prime that nitrogen to whatever level of, of, of strength I want into a motor. And your motor will run just like you run with gas but you won't have no pollution in the end and you won't have a matter of fact uh, if you just prime nitrogen with uh, resonance all you're going to get is oxygen and co2 which the two major gas in this planet we've been depleted for the last 75 years so i mean like you know um 
We don't need to make electric car. I'm, you know, that motor can run an electric car, whatever you want. You know, that's your taste. But you cannot clean the planet building an electric car. Because the electric car don't clean the planet. They pollute the planet because you have to make them. And they don't clean the air because they don't breathe. Right? So how are you going to clean the air if you don't breathe it? Something has got to breathe this, this air and clean it. So nothing else will clean the air beside the same goddamn motor who pollute the air, pollute all our air around this planet. We have to use the same motor to clean the air. So if we change our fuel, if we start using that system to, to, to because we're not changing our fuel, we're literally changing the primer, primer system, and then we're using the other primer so we can prime the nitrogen with resonance so we don't create pollution, instead we create oxygen and, and CO2. It, the amount of cars on this planet and the amount of plane and train and, and ship on the thing, I guarantee you, in less than a month, you will not recognize because you won't be able to taste the air anymore because you won't be, you will be less particle into it. You will be able to take a full breath of air without your nose running or your eyes crying or sneezing for a change, right? So, I mean, for me, replacing all the car and all the stuff with electric motor is not the way to do it. You won't be able to fix this planet fast enough. You won't. As simple as that. Anybody would think they can do it they're highly illusionistic. I know they're on drug, they should get out of it and get some good stuff. Because like, really, it took us that many years to bring this planet to a shithole. And you think by removing the gas car and putting electric car, you're gonna fix the problem. You're still swimming on a cesspool. The shit is still there. You're just not adding to it. Well, you can't add to it because you have to build a car and that create a whole shitload of pollution. Right? So you're not, you're not really doing fuck all, literally, with an electric car. Except it's really quiet when you drive and it can go really, really, really fast, way faster than piston drive. Right? So there's the whole story about, you know, you know, what the new energy can do. So it's up to you to decide, like, you know, um, you know, then I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to go with that. You know, I don't really... That's your choice, not mine. I know where I'm going, you know. I don't really care if he, anybody's believe me stuff. And when I get my little thing working and I get my house running out, that's mean I can do that for myself in the middle of fucking Timbuktu nowhere, about 300 miles from any civilization, and watch pay TV, right? Having all my 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 equipment, my tools working perfectly, I can heat up. It could be 300 degrees Celsius below zero. I don't give a shit. I can keep up with that, right? Can you keep up with your fuel today? Your fuel will fucking freeze. You know, it will freeze. Now this motor have two bearings. But when I got finished with this motor, I'm gonna put two needle bearings to hold the stator properly in place. And then I'm gonna start the motors and then you remove, you back up the needle bearing from the shaft and it's bearing free, it's not magnetic bearing, it's bearing free because the rotation with the magnet car carry this nice solid cushion to ride on. So now I have no friction. And I was going to design a goddamn magnetic bearing and I did, did design it, you know, and then I think about it, so I am stupid or what? I'm working with magnet on both ends, that shot. I already got my, 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 my magnetic bearing, right? I just have to spin it. And then, and then I just thought about it because I was working with needle bearing before and a very simple to build, right? And yeah, all you had to do is keep it nice and straight where if you had bearing, it would be standing at. And then you start spinning it. And as soon as you start spinning it, you back off the needle. And there you go. That thing doesn't have any friction whatsoever. So how long is this going to last? I don't know. Um, I'm only 60 years old and zero friction. It was something where you could say if you have zero friction, it lasts forever. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I can't, I'm not there to, the, to ever yet to tell you how long it lasts. But it will last a long time. Put it this way. So um, no, it's just a question of you know realizing is we've been lying. 
the, 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 the power company are thief. Uh, same thing with your cellular phone. They're fucking just raping you in the ass, literally. And people all have a smile and go and pay some more. I mean, like, you know, it, it, it goes on and on and on. You know, the store goes by, you know, 16 cent bottle of water. Soon he brings it at the store, it's 250. I mean, like, you know, it goes on and on and on. Like, you know, the world is just stupid. And they think, you know, we need more, we need to make more money so we can live. Well, I'm 60 years old and I've been hearing that for 60 years. I need to more, make more money. I need to make more money. Well, do you make, how many more, more money you make in, in the last 60 years and it's never enough? Then maybe that's not really working for you. Maybe you should ask it, I want to have a lower cost of living. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wow. What a brilliant idea. Removes most of the fucking greed and then everybody would be able to live comfortably for what they make. They would have an access of money. They would probably use it and shove it in the fucking stove to heat up the place. Because they can't spin it. If you remove the greed in this planet. But, you know, uh, I don't see that happen. I, I don't see that happen to this whole system collapse and literally destroy the civilization, destroy itself. So, you know, hopefully I'll die before I, I, I get rendered up. But I got two kids, they're going to be red head first into it. And I don't, I don't envy those kids at all because I think they got a, sh a, a shitty deal. And the reason those kids have a shitty deal is because it's only, you know, it's literally our fault. Our parents' fault, our fault, you know. Our parents would start to get a little bit more relaxed about stuff. They didn't get keep on top of a bus with a goddamn stick and said, don't fucking do that, do this, or you're going to regret it down the road. Right? You hear that? Don't do it. You're going to regret it down the road. I heard that many times from my dad. I never listened to it. He should have kicked my fucking ass off. You know, he really should have kicked my ass. Because it would have made me a better understanding of what kind of mess we are. We really are. Because it's no turning around. I mean, if we keep going like this, why, why bother turning around? We're heading straight for the fucking cliff at 300 miles an hour with no brakes. And you're telling me you're going to be able to stop this bus? Yeah. I mean, house overpriced by about 90% of their price. You know? And you're telling me, like, oh, you know what I'm talking, right? Now let me ask you a question, right? Everybody's talking about gold, right? Oh, I man, gold is like, you know, that's going to save the world, right? Well, if it's such a fucking good deal, go to the bank and borrow money to buy gold. See how far that's going to work for you. You can't get a fucking dime from a bank to buy gold. If it gold is such a good fucking deal, or you're going to make so much fucking money, they should fucking pour the money out of that bank and you, you know, for you to go get as much gold as, as you can. <gasps> but they don't. You know why? Because your gold is not worth that money. And they know about it. It's just another fucking illusion. You know, illusion. Look what happened when the gold went up at $1,500. How long did that last before people just stay home? They couldn't afford to drive, the gas went up, they couldn't afford to eat anymore, so they couldn't afford to spend any money whatsoever because it was so expensive. It lasted a couple of weeks and then it went back down. So they reached a level, you know. Look at Kuwait or I mean, like 300 and some trillion dollars in the debt. Because they bet to build all their fancy dancy island and stuff like this for the gold to go all the way up to $5,800 an ounce and up from there. And everybody bought that bullshit and went with it. Now they're all fucking sitting there and looking at that fucking island. It's like a white elephant. Right? But hey, that's the way, that's the way the world, you know, today think, you know. The, they, 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 they resonate like a bad fart in, a, in an empty room. That's the way, no, that's the word the world think today. It just, they don't have any, any common sense whatsoever. So, but anyway, that's what I, that's how far I am with my little generator to I got my controller. So everybody, you know, I'll give you another quick look here. All right. And here we go. Oops, sorry about that, guys. 
So, I mean, this is the whole look of the, of, of, of the generator. That's for the portable, the small portable generator for, for the camping. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, well, soon I got the controller, we'll be able to figure it out. You know, we'll do more tests on it, and hopefully, uh, so far the tests are excellent, my number. I'm 8 volt from looping this thing around. 8 volt away, because I can't turn fast enough. If I had 8 volt away, I could literally loop, loop this thing by itself. It would just run by itself. It wouldn't create any energy, it would run by itself. So, only 8 volt, because I'm only pr producing 38 volts, and I need 46 volt to run it. So, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is what I've been doing, and uh, anybody want to wind up those motor, those, those thing there, you're going to learn the hard way how hard that stator is. It's one of the hardest stator to wind. You know, you only got two and a half inch to feed the wire back and forth with your finger and you have to pull. That wire there is 20 and a half gauge and you need 80, something like 80 pounds of pressure, which I'm not a machine, so I just pull it as hard as you can and you cut your finger in pieces. The first time I wound that, it took me a week and a half before I can actually work my hand again. And I rewind this thing four times now. I'm getting pretty good at it. Took me two days the first time, a day, and now I can do the whole thing in about half a day, maybe a little bit less. So, you know, and he said, you know, uh, per, you know, more you try, you know, you get to perfection. And that's actually, that's the way it works. So, there you go, folks. You know, that's the generator. You know, it's a four-phase generator, all hooked up together and crisscrosswise. So I don't, I just move my, my instead of going in a circle, I just crisscross my coil and uh, it works. So, well, uh, I'll give you some uh, more updated to when I get my controller and how fast can I make it spin and then maybe we can try it on the big, tra on the big transformer, on the uh, KW transformer. So, uh, to the next time, you guys have a good night and uh, we'll talk to you later.